Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Today, in episode number 30, we're talking about tachin. And before we get into a little bit more about what is tachin, I just want to say, hi, Vita June. Hi there, Vita June. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So it was so great to see you in person last week. Vita and I, for those who may not know, we speak like this actually online over Zoom and we get to see each other, but we met in person with our husbands out to dinner for the second time only we met in person and it was so much fun to get to do that. Yeah, I had a really great time and it was so nice to finally be able to celebrate how far we've come with the podcast and we wanted to originally raise a glass when we launched and then once we hit certain milestones and goals and we were finally able to do that now that we have been vaccinated. So thank goodness for that. And yes, we had a really great time. We went to Mekade, which we actually talked about in our first episode about what is Persian food. Mekade is a great little restaurant in San Francisco. And we had some really delicious foods that we'll share the pictures on Instagram for everybody to, to see all of the delicious foods that we had. So Thank you. I had a really great time. And yeah, excited to talk about tachin today. That's right. So tachin is a baked rice type of a casserole. And I really love this dish because I am a tadig lover. And tachin is, it's a rice that is mixed with yogurt and saffron and eggs. We're going to talk about it in great detail today. But one of the things and reasons why I love it is that it has a lot of that delicious crispy rice flavor, and it's really easy to put together. It's one of the first things I ever learned to make, and it's definitely on my weekly rotation list because I find that there are a lot of shortcuts to making this dish, and it's also loved by everyone in the family, so it's a win-win yeah, it is. It really can be like a showstopper presentation wise. Like you said, you bake it in like a casserole dish and you invert it onto a platter. And so it has like a really large tadik to rice ratio. So the tadik is not only on the top, but on the sides of what was in the casserole dish. And it's golden brown and delicious. And yeah, it's really loved by everyone. You know, it's always a treat to go somewhere and have them serving it or making it at home. You do make it a lot. So do you want to talk about like how you make it? Yeah, sure. I have sort of two versions. I have one that I've been making over the years that is really easy. I call it Persian chicken and rice casserole. So I make it with chicken or turkey. Oftentimes, if we have some leftover turkey from Thanksgiving, even a roast chicken. I like to make it when I have leftover rice, cooked chicken, because then it just becomes so easy. All I have to do from there, we always have yogurt in the house, plain yogurt. We almost always have eggs. So what I do is I just, I use egg yolk and I give that a little beating. I stir in yogurt and the spices are spices that are comfy, cozy (laughs) spices that I love, garlic, salt, saffron and turmeric. That's what I use in my tachin. And yeah, I just kind of mix it all together with the rice. I know that this is not traditional, but this is how I make my quick go-to weekly night recipe. And I'll just lay it in a casserole dish and that's dinner. So it's super easy when I make it that way. If I'm going for something that's, like you said, a little bit more of a showstopper, I don't even put zereshk, the sour barberries, dried barberries, in my regular recipe that I do. I don't even put that in there. My girls eat it with ketchup. Oh my God. (laughs) They eat it with ketchup. (laughs) I know. I I think that's so weird. If I want to make it for a more special occasion, I started making it in muffin tins. Mm, Individualized. They're really cute, like cup size. Everybody gets lots of tadig that way. And it is pretty to put the barberries or zareshk and farsi on top as a garnish. And I just kind of candy those with butter and sugar. So how do you make it? Have you made tachin? 
Yeah. So I think I have a little bit more of a traditional approach to making it, but the way that you said to use like kind of leftover rice and kind of throw it all together and then put it in the casserole pan, that sounds like super easy. And I'm going to have to try that because that's like a fun way to make it and great way for like a round two recipe of stuff that you can already have. When I make it, I use par-cooked rice. So you can either parboil it or I just really wash the rice and then I boil and then simmer the rice with the water and salt and a little bit of oil until all of the water is absorbed. I don't necessarily deal with soaking the rice first and then boiling it and then draining the water. I just put enough water to cook it. I think when people think of tachin, they usually think of tachin a morgue, which is made with chicken. And I think the biggest shortcut here or like a really easy way and more accessible way to make it is actually just using like rotisserie chicken. So it's kind of like a two-step process. So one step is marinating the chicken in that mixture that you were talking about. You mentioned only using egg yolks. I use a full egg, depending on how much I'm making. A few eggs, like a cup of just plain yogurt, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of lemon juice, and saffron. You can actually make it without saffron, and I think an everyday version of it, maybe I won't use saffron, but you actually need to use a lot of saffron to use it. Like I referenced in my recipe on my blog about it, that like you need to use so much saffron that like when you open the door to the room, you smell saffron. The goal is to get it like this beautiful golden color, but you definitely don't need to do that. The first step is marinating that shredded chicken in that mixture of the yogurt and the egg yolk. And I think the best way to do it is to keep it in the refrigerator for like a handful of hours or overnight. But even if you can't do it for that long, just like mixing that up with the chicken and the yogurt and the eggs, then putting a little bit of that mixture on the bottom of the casserole pan, first heavily greasing the whole casserole pan, putting a layer of the marinade down, then layering in the par-cooked rice with the marinated chicken, and then also a lot of people, when they think of touching more, they do think of that Zidish, the barberry mixed with saffron and slivered almonds. Sometimes you could put cranberries, sometimes you could put orange peel in there as well and layering that with the rice and the chicken. When I make it, I don't always care to layer it in there. Sometimes I will just use it as a garnish on top of it. But whatever way that you decide, basically filling up the casserole pan with the rice, with the chicken, with that whole marinade, covering it with foil and baking it for like an hour, hour and a half, two hours, depending on how much you're making. And then if you use like a glass Pyrex casserole dish, you can kind of like peek and see, oh, did the tadi turn color enough? Like, is it cooked all the way? And then once it is, then you invert it onto a platter. Do use the garnish that we just talked about. You can use it as like the garnish and put it up on top of it and have like a really beautiful presentation of the tachin. That sounds delicious. And that's a more authentic or traditional way. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. That makes me remember that you're actually supposed to marinate the chicken or in the yogurt sauce that would make it even more delicious. I just do the quick way. I also want to mention we just sometimes gloss over and assume that everybody knows what this means. But let's go back to tadig. We talk uh-huh. about tadig, which is the crispy bottom of the pot, which is directly translated as Ta means like bottom and dir is pot. So it's yeah. translated as the bottom of the pot. So that's the crispy rice bottom of the pot delicacy that we have. Mm-hmm. Ta chin that we're talking about today, ta again is bottom and chin in Farsi means to layer. So thank you so much for explaining how you make it. And, and what it is, is like you said, it's a layering technique. You're layering mm-hmm. it into the casserole dish. I also use a clear glass Pyrex when I'm making it for the family. If I'm doing it in the muffin tins, mm-hmm. the very pretty cute muffin tin method, which is sort of my new modern way of making it. Yeah, I do liberally spray a nonstick pan. Also, the process is a little bit different. How I've been doing it is I will take some plain rice and I use saffron spray to get the nice golden yellow color and maybe a little bit of, you know, dissolved and bloomed saffron to really get it a good color. And then I'll pack that down at the bottom first to try to get a good crispy layer. And then I'll put my marinated mixture of rice with the chicken and yogurt and eggs and spices on top and then pack that down. It is trickier to know when it's done. Yeah. I put it in a 400 degree oven. It only takes about 40 minutes with the muffin tins. But yeah, it's like, oh, I don't want to burn it. Got to make sure that it cooks long enough that it holds its shape. Mm -hmm. There's nothing sadder than inverting a muffin tin and having them fall apart. After going all that trouble. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll still be delicious. Believe me, I'll eat it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. I also wanted to note that like the garnish that we've been talking about, you know, typically what goes into that includes like slivered almonds, slivered pistachios, zidishk, the dried barberries. And typically you kind of saute these all in a little bit of butter or a little bit of oil with a little bit of saffron usually to like soften them up a little bit. You know, the latest way that I made it, I actually, I didn't have any cranberries and I didn't have any pistachios. <laughs> a lot of people add a little bit of sugar to this as well to make it a little bit sweeter. So instead of adding sugar, what I did was I used a big spoonful of Seville orange marmalade and it was great. I loved it. I actually used too much. I used too much of the marmalade. I used a few spoonfuls to be honest with you and it was a little too much. And so what I did was I just had to make more of the topping so that it would distribute better. And, you know, like this is real time, right? So I didn't really want to use all my Zidishk because it's actually a very precious commodity. I mean, you, you can find it in markets and things like that. But like, you know, I had some very special Zidishk that was from Iran that I had been storing in my freezer and I didn't necessarily want to use all of it, especially because it was like at home and it wasn't a big occasion that I wanted to use so much Zidishk. So I actually chopped up dried apricots and poured that in there. And it was like so delicious. I loved it. Oh, I love apricots. So that'd be a lovely, interesting, different variation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with that kind of just like mixing it up and making it a little own version. But I did really enjoy the marmalade in there. So if you do do it, just use like a tablespoon of it at most really to kind of like sweeten it and bring it all together. Mm, interesting. Yeah, it would alter the taste a little bit, but that sounds mm -hmm. delicious. I soak my zareshk in a little boiling water just to soften it up. I am always careful to try not to burn it uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> because the color is part of the charm. So I also have some really nice like ruby red almost zareshk in my freezer. But because it's been in the freezer and it's already a dried berry, mm -hmm. it's sort of tough. And I don't want to have to use too much butter and oil and I don't want to overcook it. So I'll just soak it so for around a quarter cup of dried barberry zeresh, I'll put maybe the same amount of boiling water and then I'll drain it and I'll saute it in maybe a tablespoon of butter and about a tablespoon of sugar uh -huh. just for like a minute or two, just until it's glistening. Mm -hmm. And it does make a really pretty topping or garnish. It looks like jewels all over the rice. It's really beautiful. Yeah, and the little muffin tin version is COVID friendly. I'm actually going to take some to a belated birthday family outside gathering today. It travels well. It works for picnics. Yeah. And so I'm excited to share it. And, you know, each person can just take their one little tachin and it's a nice appetizer too. You know, I never really thought about it as appetizer until I made it in the muffin tin size. Yeah, that's perfect for like a get together, a party. And it's actually great portion control. <laughs> so, you're not, okay, this is my little. Food. Except that I can eat about, you know, <laughs> seven of them by myself. <laughs> so good. As I mentioned, it could be a real showstopper of a dish. So if you're entertaining, it's really beautiful to have this big inverted rice dish that's like beautiful with has all these like jewels on top of it. Have it at, like at a party or a bigger affair. It's a really like beautiful thing to have on your table. I've actually even seen it tiered on top of each other. So different size tachines inverted on top of each other. Cool. So it looks like a little layered. Like a cake. Rice cake, essentially. So creative. It's something that's easily shared, you know, once you kind of invert it and it can stand alone. Yeah, I appreciate that about it. It's pretty balanced. All you need to do is serve it maybe with a little salad shirazi, some sort of green salad or even mastochiar. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's got everything in there. Just add some greens and you have a complete meal. Yeah. Some of the other variations that I've been seeing lately when it comes to tachin is people stuffing their tachin with choresht. Choresht is the hearty stews that we have. So I've seen a couple different variations where they have like gorma sabzi in the middle. So a layer is choresht. I think I've seen that. I think I've seen it online. Yeah. I'm starting to see a couple different versions. What type of choresht do they put inside? So I've seen it with like gorma sabzi in there. 
So it's basically the bottom layer is like plain rice. There's a layer of gourmet sabzi and then there's a layer of just white rice again. So it's kind of like sandwiched in there. And I've seen different things with like eggplant. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity to vary how you make your attaching. So it doesn't have to just be like the saffron and chicken version. You can make it with different vegetables in there. You can really just kind of come up with your own recipe. I think that the things to note about that is that whatever you're putting inside of it has to be at least halfway cooked so that it can finish cooking with the rest of the ingredients. But you don't want to put like layers of like raw eggplant in there. It needs to have like a little bit of saute or a little bit of softness to it to be able to like properly cook in there. Eggplant would be delicious. You could make different kinds within the muffin tin. Uh If you're really ambitious, you could have the vegetarian eggplant and you could have the chicken one and... Yeah, and I do think that some regions have different versions of it as well. So I think that touching could be a very cozy, satisfying during the week meal. And it could also be one that you can serve at formal events, share with your friends or entertaining. So I think it's a pretty versatile dish that a lot of people love. Everyone kind of appreciates it. Yeah, it's very simple, you know, just chicken and rice and (laughs) random factoid. If I'm making it lately, I have little fur children. I have um, (laughs) a lot of animals and one of my dogs has a sensitive stomach. So not only does my husband love chicken and rice, simple eating, but one of my dogs now, Mm -hmm. I cook chicken and rice for and then I put it in the blender and I freeze it. So I actually make chicken and rice on the weekly and then some Uh of it I'll use for the family to throw into like Persian chicken and rice casserole tachin and some of it I will cook for my dogs. Oh, that's so cute. Cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about Tachin with me. Hopefully, everyone listening enjoyed that episode and can try making it. We'll have some recipes, links on our show notes if anyone wants to take a look at that. Those are available on our website and also wherever you downloaded the podcast. If you just scroll down, you should be able to see the show notes in that platform too. So Tachin actually was one of the questions that someone had asked us for our Ask the Beat segment. So we actually decided to make the whole episode about Tachin. So we'll focus on that for this week. And we look forward to talking to you guys next week. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, Bita Jun. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.